Hi, everybody. Welcome to Futurum Tech TV. I'm your host, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited to have a little discussion today with Bill Boswell, VP of Cloud Marketing at Siemens Digital Industries Software on this short and punchy edition of Futurum Tech TV, uh, end of year edition. Bill, welcome aboard. How are you today? Great, Daniel. Good to be with you today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's it's great to have you, Bill. We've uh, been working together for the past few years. Um, always appreciate the chance to catch up with uh, Siemens, hear what's going on. And that's exactly what I'm doing. End of year, like I said, I'm trying to talk to business leaders across different industries, um, connect on sort of what happened in 2020, some of the big uh, identifiers, giving our audience here at Future and Research a little background, a little insight, what you can share, uh, and then a little look ahead to the future. Um, you know, the business you're in, um, and maybe that's a good way to start, because I got a few questions for you. We'll take 10, 12 minutes or so for everybody out there. So stay with us, by the way, all the way to the end. Um, but how about a quick introduction? I gave everyone your name and your title, but uh, what do you do over at Siemens Digital Industry Software? Uh, sure, Daniel. It, well, it's, it's great to be here. So I work for the part of Siemens called Digital Industry Software. So we do software for industrial manufacturers and, and for uh, industrial applications. And as vice president of cloud marketing, I work uh, on our cloud business in general, but uh, also more specifically on our industrial IoT solutions, as well as working with our, our teams on the low code application development. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you guys are very busy. The company has been very busy. It's been growing uh, like crazy as we've seen the uh, explosion of data at the edge, uh, driving in industries, which by the way, that Siemens have deep roots in like manufacturing, healthcare, um, just tons and tons of opportunity. And that's really where you are, you know, and a lot of people out there probably don't even recognize uh, just how invested that Siemens has become in cloud, hence your role, cloud marketing, right? People have no doubt that um, Siemens is a giant in industrial technology. But that was one of the big reasons I wanted to bring you on and highlight a little bit because you guys really are making some serious investment in expanding your footprint, de developing SaaS solutions, developing um, industrial IoT at scale, edge solutions, uh, incorporation of AI. So I'll let you, I'll, I won't steal all your thunder though. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about the year though, 2020. So 2020 had a big impact on um, everything, COVID, uh, travel ceased, uh, uh, plants and factories and retail environments uh, either shut down for periods and then had to get started and move even faster. What's 2020 look like over there for you and your team? Well, I don't think anybody's going to miss 2020 next year when when, when we uh, finally can can put it to to rest. But uh, you know, it's been it's been a, a really interesting year. Of course, the the kind of human toll of the pandemic has been a, a challenge for everybody. But from a digitalization perspective, and our customers, right, who are other manufacturing companies, other industrial companies that are that have been making that move into uh, Digital technologies, not just cloud, but uh, on-premise software as well, right? It's it's been a really uh, important year for them. For those companies that had already started, uh, I think they've weathered the storm uh, a bit better than others, and uh, it's been a high priority for them. And for other companies, right, who were kind of thrust into uh, remote work and and having to uh, keep their businesses running, their manufacturing operations running, digitalization has become an, an even higher priority. Um, you know, from, from our perspective too, we've seen a lot of changes and a lot of uh, kind of increased interest in things like industrial IoT. Um, you know, as companies look both for kind of the internal benefits of that and the external benefits as well, internal, right? It's things like reducing expenses, uh, optimizing the use of your assets, uh, conserving resources, improving kind of safety and security. But externally, the companies that we work with are looking at things like how do they use real-time performance monitoring tied back into their closed-loop digital twins to improve their product design? How can they do remote service? How can they do better energy management? How can they even implement new business models to work with their customers? And so, you know, that whole emphasis on, on digitalization has been uh, really increasing in focus during, the, the, during 2020. Yeah, we've heard things like a decade of digital transformation and in uh, in in a matter of weeks and months. And a lot of that transformation was in in 
traditionally slower lagging industries, and I'm certainly not suggesting that those are the industries you were dealing with because you had some very, very advanced customers, but manufacturing, healthcare, uh, government, public sector, those are industries that had potentially met some roadblocks, whether they be financial, whether the roadblocks have been um, you know, just scale, whether it has been the availability of the right mix of technology. And so the acceleration has, has to have been really big this year um, you're seeing the people putting their foot on the gas because basically it's kind of like fool me once, shame on, you know, you fool me twice, shame on me. A lot of companies weren't prepared. A lot of companies were not prepared for what happened this year. And, um, companies that were, were massive beneficiaries and able to ramp up a production at scale, being able to, you know, deal with, uh, automation and applied automation to be able to increase uh, production, uh, optimize supply chain. And these are all things that you're dealing with. Um, and I'd love to kind of touch on something else too, because a lot of like born on cloud companies that are traditional IT, you know, your, your Zoom booms, right? The, the Microsoft Teams and uh, all the cloud apps, right? Really saw a ton of growth, but you're in a cloud space as well. But you're kind of coming from the OT side, converging on the IT side, as opposed to a lot of those being traditional IT um, that didn't really have to worry about operational technologies. Um, but that ITOT convergence has been a big topic now for feels like years. But, um, you know, you have to be looking at both IT and OT, meeting demand, meeting scale, meeting the needs. How is the company doing that? Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, point, Daniel. And, you know, really, it has been a topic for our whole industry for a number of years, right? As, as companies have been moving towards digitalization and, of course, uh, you know, there are large companies that have large supply chains, a lot of partners. And, you know, we're working both um, internally as users of our own systems, as well as working with, uh, you know, other companies that are, that are having to implement those. And so, you know, it comes down to both using our own technology uh, as well as developing that technology, listening to our customers' needs. And of course, we're partnered with companies like AWS and Microsoft and Alibaba Cloud in the, the cloud space, as well as, you uh, you know, SaaS for analytics and the list goes on and on. But, uh, you know, we have applications in our software business that are born on the cloud, been doing that for years, as well as, um, you know, kind of hybrid environments where we're, we're helping uh, to move some of the existing software to the cloud. And, and you know, we think also that, you know, in this path to, to IT, OT convergence, um, you know, customers want options and they want to be able to run uh, pieces of the solution on public cloud where it makes sense or on private clouds where it makes sense, but they're going to be in these integrated edge to cloud environments, uh, you know, for, for a long time. And of course with manufacturing and for frontline businesses like that, they have to be secure, they have to be scalable uh, and they've got to be easy to maintain. And so as we've been helping make that move uh, from IT and OT coming together, that's why we're adding things like low code application development and building right into our, uh, our cloud strategy for what we call our accelerator products, um, you know, the ability to do low code, to do data integration, to do that uh, from integrated edge to cloud environments right from the start. So, you know, it's uh, in manufacturing, I think the only difference is 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 maybe that you're probably going to have a bit of these hybrid environments for uh, a long period of time. And of course, there's going to be applications that run on the edge that will always be on the edge, but they need to have that secure cloud connected environment. Yeah, it's, it's certainly going to all connect. The edge is going to be a big frontier. It's been talked about for a few years as if it's already there, but it's its whole new third place. And every one of these uh, quote unquote edges is like another uh, another cloud, another data center, another place system to integrate. Um, and many of them uh, connect to dozens, hundreds, thousands, or even millions of sensors that are collecting just uh, massive amounts of data from everything from jet engines to smart cities and and advanced manufacturing plants. And I, that's uh, that's extraordinary stuff that you guys are dealing with. And I think that it really, it helps people to think about the kind of use cases and, um, and in essence, the business models that they're, they're trying to work on, you know, looking at it from a 2020 perspective um, and, you know, we talk about industrial IOT as a service. And, and so we talk about those as solutions. Of course, there's some platform type pieces to that as well. Uh, and that's where we leverage our, uh, not only our own software, but the infrastructures of the hyperscalers and, and, and our other partners. But, uh, you know, people, when they think of uh, industrial IT, they, they should think of the, the kind of, you uh, 
solutions they need for their industries. Of course, a lot of them go across industries, but you know, asset performance management, uh, condition monitoring and remote service, right? Not having to send people out into the field unless needed. Uh, uh, has both the business benefits as well as the health and safety kind of benefits these days. Predictive maintenance, you know, AI, ML, uh, and and even uh, some really neat scenarios this year of, of energy management, right? And being able to really um, optimize um, how your equipment's running, how your products are running, how much energy you're using when you're buying it. There's a lot of really interesting uh, use cases that people are paying attention to, you know, to try and get uh, every bit of the operational efficiency out of their, uh, their facilities this year. Absolutely. So I'd like to ask this question of all my guests as I as I wrap up these short Future in Tech TV segments. Okay. So based upon what you saw this year, the big investments being made by tech, everything we just shared and kind of covered, uh, 2021, I'd love to just get a quick prediction from you, sort of what, where do you see, what are the big trends for, for cloud, for Siemens? What do you think uh, 2021 looks like? Yeah, well, I, I think it's uh, a couple of things. I do think that the the, the way that we all work has, has changed. I think that this has been a really interesting year of opening people's eyes to the importance of having that digital strategy uh, and, and moving forward digitalization across everything that people do in, in kind of product development and, and manufacturing. And the, the overall demands, I think, uh, you know, are kind of trends that we're seeing. I think you'll just see pick the, the pace will pick up from. So I think, you know, we talked a little bit about energy optimization. Um, you know, hyper automation really brings together that what we see in the factories and in the plants and the kinds of things that we do with automation, hardware and software, uh, you know, moving that up a notch. That That's going to be a trend that continues, you know, over the next uh, decade, at, at least uh, from a customer perspective. You know, customers are seeing their and when I talk about customers, of course, we're talking about business to business. Right. So we're, we're talking about machine builders. We're talking about OEMs for automobiles, aerospace, uh, you know, all kinds of people that build everything that we use um, every day. And so their customers are becoming more demanding now as well. And, and um, you know, just like we've seen in our personal lives through the through 2020, right, people want to have things on demand, things on service. So I think the the continuation of, of business models of, of uh, you know, everything from um, equipment as a service to, to you name it, right, uh, everything as a service is that that kind of trend is, is going to continue as well. And just like we expected in our in our personal lives from our, you know, our home offices, I think we'll see that more in the in the business environment, too. So, you know, whether it's uh, power by the hour kinds of things through to to other kinds of capacity things. We're going to see that pick up as well. So I think that coupled with the new business models of people wanting to be able to deliver that to their customers, um, those those things will will just pick up. And of course, the whole collaboration piece, uh, you know, collaborating around design and product design and closing the loop back to the digital twins with the real time performance data, uh, you know, whether it's uh, things you wear on your arm or things you you travel in or fly in, right? It's it's that, that being able to do that and connect to, to those um, tens of millions of devices out there to improve product design, improve performance. It's going to, you know, be a trend that we're just, it's going to become more and more commonplace. Absolutely. And those are some great insights. Big year ahead. Certainly see all those trends you mentioned being really relevant. And, you know, you can definitely check out my thoughts on Forbes. I shared my top 10 uh, digital transformation trends for 2021. I'll throw that link in the in the comments if you want to check it out. But if not, there's going to be a lot more to see. The ITOT convergence space, uh, you know, Bill Boswell, Siemens. Uh, looks like you got one more thing to say. I got one more thing for you. You're throwing out links. Uh, Daniel, if you want to go to, to go to mindshare.io uh, and uh, take a look at uh, industrial IT, you can see a, a button there to start for free. And you can actually get on. Uh, onboard your own devices. You can onboard your mobile phone, try out some low code app development. So it's it's a great place to, to see. So I'll throw, I'll throw that, that in the com and, and I'll show that I'll throw that in the notes as well. Mindsphere.io or dot com. Mindsphere.io. Yeah, All right. Just click I'll throw on that down there. Free. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Bill, thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of your year. Everybody out there, appreciate you uh, for tuning into Futurum Tech TV. Stick with us. Lots more to come. Bye bye.